Um, in the next part of the presentation, you're going to be able to answer then these two questions. What artist is best known for starting Cubist style and then list some ways to make artwork Cubist? Okay. Um, so that's where you should be on the sheet. So any guesses as to who the artist is that's best known for starting Cubism? Yes, uh, Pablo Picasso. So just like with any, uh, any, art, uh, any art style, okay, there's a range from realistic to ab extra abstract, okay? So this is a self-portrait of Pablo Picasso. And that's more on the realistic side, okay? it looks like him. It's more of a caricature, but it looks like him. You could totally pick him out. Um, and then this over here is more on the way abstract side. Okay. So if we start with the self portrait, um, Picasso started cubism after he lived across the street from a gallery that had a bunch of African masks, wooden African masks in the window. So he's looking at that every day and he's looking at that thinking, what would happen if I painted like that? Okay, so he's not saying that he has a line down his nose or a line down his cheek. What he's saying is if if my face was carved out of wood, what would that look like? So one way that you can break up, or sorry, one way that you can show that something is cubism is by breaking it up into shapes. So he's done that on this one by putting the lines on it. Okay, so you can write that on your sheet. If I go over here, this painting is called Weeping Woman. So we know it's a woman, not a dude hanging out, or, you know, a dude with long hair, okay? And she's crying, okay? She's not quietly crying in the corner, though, where you think that maybe she might be crying. She is freaking out, okay? And we'll see more of that in just a second. But another way to make something cubist is to show different views at the same time, okay? So he's got these football-ish shaped eyes, okay, which means that he's or she's looking right at us, okay, just like the Picasso self-portrait. But then if we look down the face, look at this mouth. So that's showing two different views at the same time. You guys did this when you were little. If you're... Uh, if you were asked to draw a picture of your home, place where you live, you would draw all of the things that you liked about it, all being able to see it all at the same time, even if it wasn't realistically possible. Okay. So I might, if I was going to do that um, when I was five, I might draw my backyard and my, my bedroom and my kitchen all visible at the same time, even if that's not realistic. Okay. The first way to make something cubist is to break it up into shapes. That's what we've got going here. And with the color, we've got that going on over here too. Um, the second way is to show different views at the same time. So these eyes are looking straight forward and her mouth and chin are to the side, okay? Um, and the third way then is to show movement. So because he's drawn multiple noses, that means she's moving all around. This is Picasso doing a light painting and blind contour automatically makes something cubist because it's disconnected, but it's more the abstract cubist. Light painting is where you have, he's got a little flashlight in his hand. You could do it with glow sticks. Um, but how this works is a camera is open longer and there's apps for this now, of course. Um, but the camera is open longer to be able to capture the photo, the drawing that he's doing. Okay. Um, and then because of that, it's let in extra light. So he's actually working in a dark room, what it looks like to him, but the camera has sucked in any of that light leakage that's going under the door and kind of replaced it and built it up over time. But that's nice because then we can see his ceramic pottery and things behind him. Picasso was one of the few artists that not only knew how to work in lots of different mediums, because all artists do, but he actually did that. He has work all over the world in different mediums. So ceramics, um, metal sculptures, he did theater set designs. He does did drawings and paintings and collages and 
and you can see it all over the world in different museums and cities all over. It's pretty amazing that way. This is an example of what you guys are doing. So you just did a realistic cartoon. If we assume that this bowl is, it's more realistic than it is cartoon, but um, you did a realistic cartoon of your, this is a realistic bowl. His series is about 10 bowls instead of three. I cut some of them out. What you're gonna do next is a cubist self-portrait. You could break it up into shapes. You could show different views at the same time and you could show movement. How could we show movement on this bowl here? These are the only three paintings of tree, these trees that I actually like of his. Um, and the reason is because this is his normal work. As a painter, it annoys me when people do stuff like this. <laughs> um, the realistic tree, okay? Then that's like your realistic cartoon, okay? Now, this would be the cubist one where the tree is kind of broken up into shapes and the background is too. See how it's just kind of shattered a little bit? Then this one is the one that you'll do on Wednesday where it's exploded. This one, if the tree wasn't in shades of brown and green, you, whoops, you probably wouldn't recognize that it's a tree at all. This is the tattoo on the top of my arm, okay? It, I was not meaning to do cubism. It, it happened by an accident. Uh, I started with a photograph of Frida Kahlo. I did a painting of her because I'm a painter, so that's what I do. And my style is actually abstract expressionism for painting. I took a photograph of the painting, printed that out, and I traced it off to get a line drawing. And I did about 10 between that tracing and what I actually got tattooed on my arm. Um, how is this cubism though? What, what method of making something cubist did I use? Okay. So today you're gonna look at what you drew yesterday, okay? And you're gonna start with one of those and you're making it cubist, okay? so. Remember in the other presentation, um, I talked about ways to make something cubist. Okay, so I can break it up into shapes. I'm going to start with an outline. Okay, so I've broken this up into shapes. I've made this a lot more angular than what she actually looks like here. Okay, I've also made this eye break the barrier of staying in her face. Okay, so I'm going to move on to this one. I'm going to make a different version of cubism. Okay, so now I've got my three versions of my dog as a cubist. That's what's due at the end of class today, plus filling in these two answers here.